Mr. Craig. Who do we yes. have? Oh boy, we've got a doozy. Ooh, it's, ooh from the rainy, cold ah. northwest, we have ooh. Jeremy Olson and Kristen Isaacson. Get naughty with some sales roleplay secrets. Ooh, I'm gonna get under the covers with this one. Let's do it. Do it. Buckle up, it's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Oh, he he told me his microphone's a little bit better than ours. <laughs> no, I, I didn't I say that. I, I, all I said was, and it's the same <laughs> one that Jason has, which he said, you need to get this one because it's the one that Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on. No way. So, yes. Yeah. Well, it's not this the exact one. Itself. one. It's the same <laughs> Jason has the exact one that Michael Jackson. No, I don't. <laughs> I wish. Nice Hi. to meet you, by the way, Jason. Yeah, good to meet you guys. <laughs> yeah, what's the, you're in California, right, Jason? I am in California. Yep. Cool. Huntington Beach right now. California's on fire. Has been, yeah. It's no good. Yeah. Dad. Well, so this, th- speaking of Michael Jackson. <laughs> nice and segue. This directed towards Jeremy. <laughs> What were you doing the year that Michael Jackson's Thriller was released? That's oh, 19. Well, well, you got to give me a hint. What year, what year was it? And I can Th- tell that's you. That's 1979. Exactly. So it's, no it's, way. 1979? 1979. I was seven years old. I was probably at a Sonics game because that happens to be the year they won the championship. Mm-hmm. And I would have been in, I don't know, what would I have been in, in at seven? Kindergarten? Mm-hmm. I would have been seven Ish. years old ish yeah first maybe i don't know yeah yeah no we had fred brown we had gus williams i mean the sonics were the best back then yeah some agents that we get on here they're like i was a 20-year agent at that point (laughs) well i I actually had believe it or not at that point in my life i was seven and i had known for three years that i wanted to be in insurance wow no Oh yeah, no, we talk about he this a lot. Actually, needs to be like I always say, we need to make like an insurance action figure doll out of him. Like it'd be Jeremy with his backpack. Now it used to be his briefcase, but he like literally was toddling around like a little insurance robot when he was probably three years old. No, my my that is my, awesome. My grandfather was uh, he was about a thirty-five year agent, so I used to go into his office all, every Saturday and hang out. My dad was a uh, forty five-year agent so wow yeah it's all i've ever wanted to be third year generate or third generation yeah i just had to go with the other company though just so i could kind of do my own thing but uh yeah it's it's been in my family forever so let's let's start there let's go back to the beginning so you, and i think we just did <laughs> so from, from from diapers pretty much you wanted to be an insurance. Kind of just like a gross thought. Can we change that up a little? <laughs> the diapers? <laughs> just, Sorry. I got four kids. Two of mine are in diapers right now. Oh, I got a lot of diapers. That's so cute. It's so cute when they're little like that, but the diapers are kind of bleh. Yeah. You have a diaper genie? I do. Multiple. Good By the way, diaper that. genie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to blurp that out if you don't cough up. We, we measure success by whether you have a diaper genie or not. It's true. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we digress. So, so, so you, you jumped into insurance right after, right out of college. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I graduated Saturday, June 10th, 1995. I started Monday, June 12th. Wow. I don't want to miss a day. And I don't know what's more amazing that you did it right after or that you remember the day that you graduated That's from college. Amazing. Oh, it was the best day of my life. No, <laughs> he's like, he really is an insurance. Nerd. No, it, I mean, it's true. It's, it's always been something I wanted to do and just, uh, you know, really got lucky with the path that I took. I was a bank teller, which I actually took that job so I could kind of learn how to, you know, just deal with people, build or poor. I intentionally took that job. And during those four years in college, I got to know a local Allstate guy and just went to him and said, hey, why don't I work for you for a couple of years, learn the industry, and you can be my mentor, and then I'll do my own thing in a few years. And that's what we did. That's awesome. 
It's so crazy. And I was just thinking about this the other day that all the jobs and experiences we've ever had really define who we are and how we sell insurance or whatever we're doing tomorrow. And that's what I try to tell our team a lot is like, like these skills are crazy. Like you're learning things that will change your life and your kids' lives if you really learn how to A, sell, but sell yourself. And it, selling is everything. So I don't know. Yeah. Just a reflection. That, that's, it's actually true. I, I actually went back to school later in life and I had to um, write a learning autobiography of all of my past experience um, up until like, you know, I don't know, I went back and graduated like six years ago. And so it is, I did exactly that. You had to actually write what each experience, um, how it equated into a learning experience and what you got out of it. And if you map it out from the beginning, even when you were in high school, all the way up until now, you see this like common thread. Yep. Um, and it really gives you like your character traits and who you are. It's, it was really an interesting wow. process. Yeah. If you guys that, ever want to read my book, just, you know, let me know. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not available on Amazon? No. It's not available. <laughs> no. <laughs> So Kristen, what about you? And how did, I'd like you to start with where you started, how you ended up uh, with uh, Carnegie and then, then hooking up with Jeremy and you guys can fight over that content. We can fight over the content. Oh, yeah. Go. We normally do, well, right? We, we'll leave the Dale Carnegie part to you because that is truly her first love. <laughs> He's jealous of Dale Carnegie. He's dead, actually. Um, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I actually was in insurance. I actually worked for MetLife Insurance um, before I worked for Dale Carnegie. And I left MetLife Insurance saying, I'm never going to be in insurance again. Like, insurance is not my thing. I really wanted to get into professional development. Well, you might have called it boring. I called it boring, yep. And uh -huh. I, you know, I had a good run there, but I was on the financial services side and was passionate about helping people, but there was just something that didn't click for me to continue the rest of my okay. career. I was very um, passionate about this Dale Carnegie thing. I found out that they had a training center right by where I lived, and I wanted to be a part of that. So I was pretty aggressive. I went over there and just said, you guys should hire me and this is why. And um, I didn't stop until I got the job. There you and go. so that does tell you something about me because I do that with pretty much everything in life. If, <laughs> if I really believe in it, I'll go for it and um, am pretty persistent. But uh, so I started working for Dale Carnegie, absolutely loved uh, my career there. And I still work there as a certified trainer. So I teach classes there probably about three to four times a year. It's an eight week commitment every time I do it. And I teach the world famous Dale Carnegie class, which is a um, basically like a foundational class and teaching people how to communicate more effectively, build their confidence and just help them be more authentic showing up in the world. And that's where Jeremy brought some of his team members into our classes. And uh, we started working, teaching some of his team members one-on-one. -on -one. He contracted me through Dale Carnegie as a coach and it wasn't something like the typical contract that we did and uh and then as i continued to hear what his vision was well i i just remember yeah so we we had gone to a few workshops and i remember one day kristen called me and said hey you know what your one of your employees mike uh asked if i could just stop by his office he's struggling would you mind you know she wasn't wanting to charge me or anything just can i go help him and so she, I don't know if you spent an hour or half a day there, yeah, I don't but know. just saw a world of difference. And so um, I just called her and said, hey, is there any way I can have you work with more of my team members on a one-on-one -on -one basis? And so we talked to, you know, the franchise owner and eventually worked it out to where you could work. I think it was the Fab 13, we called it, because it was 13 of my team members that she would meet with once a week for an hour or so. Actually, and, it was only a half an hour. Oh. I just did these half an hour coaching sessions with 13 of his team members. Yeah, and it, it was just awesome. I've always loved coaching, just a huge believer in it. And uh, so I just started planting the seed that, man, wouldn't it be really <laughs> cool like if I had one of you in my agency? And I said, no. <laughs> 
but uh, it, eventually, it eventually ended up, I did because I loved what I did so much, but I would say his story, like just like with you guys, his story was so compelling. And he actually made talking about insurance and thinking about selling insurance fun. And I had never seen, I thought there's no way that if he can get me to actually think it would be fun to coach on insurance and talk about insurance, um, there's something really weird going on here. And so I ended up coming over to the dark side and working for him full time as the team coach and then continuing with Dale Carnegie in a different way, just working, um, teaching that one class that I'm so passionate about. If that's, that is awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That is You're great. awesome. Well, thank you. But, but <laughs> if this, if, if that's the dark side, then does that make Jeremy the emperor? <laughs> I I don't follow Star Wars, but I think so. <laughs> so how, how how have you combined the two? Talk talk about that, like uh, Kristen. So what did you take from the the Carnegie class, and um, how have you kind of put that with insurance? Yeah, so. I think the big thing, like what Carnegie is so famous for, is just like effective, clear communication, and so. Once I started hearing uh, like the way that Jeremy talked about insurance, I started documenting that basically. And we started creating like talk paths that were very clear and concise because what I was hearing on phone calls when I was listening, just coaching our team members is people can get definitely get pretty mucky in the way that they talk about insurance. They can actually confuse the customer more than they help them. And so we wanted our communication with our team members uh, uh, talking to prospects and customers to be very clear and concise. And so we created this roadmap um, and a sales process specifically for our agency that was, in my opinion, very spot on, extremely intentional and um, has given us just a huge lift in our agency. So that's kind of where it started. And then I would say just my background in coaching and the methodology of how I coach it's ingrained in me. Um, so, you know, we do coaching in the moment at Dale Carnegie. And so I, you know, there's no other way. I always say I've been certified to interrupt people. And so that's <laughs> really how, how I do it is I just interrupt people when I'm noticing something and um, redirect them. And so I don't teach like the Dale Carnegie print, you know, well, I mean, anybody can Google the Dale Carnegie principles. We talk about them a ton and we try to live by that as our values in our agency. Mm -hmm. But I don't teach like the Dale Carnegie class in our agency, but I do. Obviously, that's ingrained in me, the methodology and the way. Like you can learn so much just from reading that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, mm. But it's ingrained in everything that I do because I believe in it so much. Mm -hmm. And you guys listen to calls and, and play them back, I would guess. All the time. Yeah, we yeah. absolutely love doing that. And I would say the most important thing is that there's just so many different ways to coach. Um, and you've got to change it up. So what I hear a ton when people are coaching their people is, um, oh, I wouldn't buy from you. Try again. Nope. Wouldn't buy for you still. <laughs> try again. Well, you're not, you're going to stuck on the phones today. So uh, I don't even think I want you on the phones. So <laughs> there's that, you know, there's that approach. And sometimes there's the approach where people will coach to like so many things that the team member might like feel like overwhelmed and like they can't. So we're just coaching to build confidence. We try to get a lot of peer-to-peer -peer coaching and a lot of collaboration. I would say mm. the collaboration is the biggest thing of what we do is just get that cross communication going with our team members, with prospects, with customers in everything that we do. The, the confidence is so critical, right? The more you pump them up and the more they believe in the product, believe in, in what they're doing is, is going to help, then that's where they really make the difference. Because if they're timid, the, the prospect hears it, the prospect takes control. Mm -hmm. And with that confidence, then they maintain the control of the conversation and can really take it to the next place. Yeah, and you know, I don't know if yeah. this has happened with you guys, but when I first started here, everybody was saying, I can't talk like Jeremy. He and he is. Mm -hmm. He's amazing like at talking and thinking ahead and having that confidence. And I think that everybody on our team was like, that was actually diminishing their confidence. So I don't know if that happens mm -hmm. with you guys in your agency, but that's why we created these talk fast to say, actually, you actually can talk like Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and I, I would say that's a big part of why I did bring Kristen on. I've never been a real structured guy. I, I've just always been very in the trenches. I love to meet with customers. I think the year she came on board, I had 
personally done 400 in-person reviews with customers. I love, like my dream day is to have eight back-to-back -back reviews lined up. Love that day. Uh, but I would just come back from those and, you know, probably sold 15 items. And I would say, team, just go do that. And I uh, <laughs> never would really give them a ton of guidance because I, I don't have a coaching background. Uh -huh. And so when I brought Kristen on board, you know, one of the first things that she said is, would, I'd love to implement role play in your agency. And I ran the other way because it's definitely not something that I had ever done with my team or had done myself. Not, not real comfortable with it. But I played along and let her do it with them and just kind of watch from afar and then eventually would do it myself. And I uh, just saw the, the huge benefits in that. And that's why we have this other thing I actually, well. I actually tricked him into it, but he doesn't, he, you know, <laughs> that's a good story, but I, you know, all of a sudden he, it's kind of like edging back into like, oh, what's she doing over there? People yeah. are really liking that. <laughs> but I, I do remember early on, she, she called me or we were, you know, working together and she said, what's your sales process? And I, I honestly said, I have no idea. I really just talk to the customers and just connect with them. That's what this job is all about. None of us have jobs if we don't have customers. And to me, that relationship, you know, this whole trusted advisor thing is not new to me. That's how I've always done my business is just getting in the trenches and being with customers or everything. Just right before I got on here with you guys, I was scheduling a coffee with a 35 year customer for Friday morning. That's what I love doing. That's and, awesome. Uh, and, and I think that's what Kristen really brings to the table. She thinks the same way. That's what she's always coaching to is it's everything we do is for the benefit of the customer. If they're upset, if they're wrong, it doesn't matter. They're always right in our agency. Customer's always right, period. That's awesome. And, and to your point, I want to bring up two things. One is nobody cares about your business as much as you do. So you might go into it and you care so much that you'll have a, a free flowing conversation with somebody and it's easy to sell. Mm -hmm. But when you bring somebody that's new in the office, they're kind of, they feel uncomfortable and, and they just, they, they care. They just don't care about the business as much as you do. So it's, it's important to have um, talk pass and uh, role playing and going back to role playing what you said, it being uncomfortable, it's a hundred percent uncomfortable for everybody. Let's get for that everybody. out there. Like yeah. we see people doing it on Facebook and oh yeah, let's role play. And you know, you see more of that now, but it is not, comfortable for anybody at first. I think everybody needs to say that out loud. Cause yeah, like, well, and I, I always say it's kind of like the universe getting back at me because I have to say that I don't even know. I, I remember when I was going through my certification at Dale Kearney, that was my first, you know, real experience with having to memorize things, role play them, feel uncomfortable. I was in front of like, you know, people that have been doing this forever. I go through recertification every three years and I dread, I actually am dreading it because I know that I'm going to be picked apart and coached and, you know, yeah. I am the product when I go and teach those classes. So, but I just remember thinking, I'm never going to make this. I don't think I'm going to be able to, to do this, to actually like get into this role play and um, role play these things enough to get certified. And there was a point where um, I might have said a bad word in my head. I'm not really good at swearing, so I don't say them out loud. <laughs> but um, I just got to the point where I literally one day I left and I had done it. I just felt like I did everything wrong. And I cried about role playing things like literally I did because we were reenacting all these things. Um, and I thought I'm not going to do it. And then I just thought, screw it. You know, like I am actually I don't really care. You've got to kind of let like everything go and yes. not care what people think of you in order to yes. make this work and care more about the end result. Because I think the thing that really holds people back from being effective in role play is caring about what people are looking at, what yes. they think of you and, oh, you're not doing 100%. it. We're, we're not, I think we create the safe environment where people want to be coached because we're in there with them, cheering them on. And we just have a very unique way between the two of us where um, we, I mean, we have pe team members coming to us all the time now. We have such an open communication in our environment where people will role play anything, any kind of scenario. And, uh, and then we do that on our show too, which is kind of interesting because we have, the, we call them victims. We call them willing victims. 
but um, <laughs> we have them come on our show. We've never coached them before, but they actually want the coaching and they want to feel that kind of uncomfortable because they know it will make them better. And uh, so, yeah, I would say everybody doesn't like it, um, especially yeah. at first, but then Breaking we can see the results. Breaking through the uncomfortability is what gives you the results. You were uncomfortable, but if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Right. You know, yep. People want to yep. stay comfortable and sit there and, and keep saying the same things that aren't getting them the results because at least they don't feel nervous and they're not worried about what people think. Yeah. And yep. it's yep. like completely backwards. You're never going to get, I want to make more, but I want to keep doing it this way. Well, <laughs> yeah. not going to change. Yeah. We actually did, we, I made our whole staff, we did, um, I'm a little teapot. I made oh, everybody, we all sang it. It did like the whole, you know, tip me over and pour me yeah. out thing. Hmm. And it, it talk about breaking through the uncomfortability. How many do you have on your team, Jason? Uh, right now, 12. Yeah. So it's, uh, and now, now we're doing two meetings a day. So, I mean, this stuff gets, it's, you know, once you get, once you break through the what first 10 times five, mm -hmm. I mean, it could be up to 10 times. It's uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. It could be up but, to a hundred. I mean, it just depends on the person, right? Yeah. And it really does. And what you were saying earlier, it really does make a difference when it comes from peers. Cause when I was first um, implementing like role playing, reviewing calls and stuff, I was just doing it. And so I'd bring people in and it was, it was uncomfortable. They kind of listened to me, but like, then when we started doing it with our like top performers, coaching and stuff like that, it, it's, it's a different meaning. Like it's a peer to peer thing is a different, uh, it's a different meaning altogether. And like now I just, I have our team running our own meetings and it is peer to peer and it just, it's so much more effective, yeah. I think. Um, so yeah, talk about that. Talk about the, how the peer to peer has worked um, in your agency. Um, well, I would say the first thing is, is that you kind of got to teach people like how to do peer to peer mm. coaching. Right. Um, because um, what I noticed at first when we started with peer to peer is people would go, uh, they would come from a very critical perspective. Mm -hmm. And so right. they would say, oh, you need to do this different, this different. I didn't like the way that sounded. And they're, they're <laughs> almost like more real and raw than like we are. We're like trying to build yeah. that confidence and they're thinking, now I'm going to get in there and I'm going to tell them the way it is. You know? and so they get <laughs> yeah. really excited, but that's, it does, it's not effective because it, you, it may work like one time for people to go, oh, I really like that open and honest feedback. But then after a while, it kind of wears on you and you might be, there might be some that are like that people stay away from. So we're not trying to break down that team unity. Um, so I always tell people, tell them what they're doing right, because everybody's doing something right. So start there. Right. And then um, give them one thing that you think like that in a positive way that you think that they could improve on. And so, and that's it. Like if you're doing peer to peer, that's it. And if there's, you know, then they can have a conversation about it. And because they're both doing like the same, have the same roles, they'll really respect the feedback. Yeah. But um, if you get too much like a know-it-all and too many things that you're trying to like get them to change, it can be very defeating. Mm. Well, and that just all starts with the culture. And I, I'd say we've, you know, Cameron, Kristen, and I, we've worked on this culture that we have between six locations for years. We're always mm -hmm. trying to do things just to, we call it one team. We want our team to truly think of themselves mm -hmm. as one. And so like this video pod we're on right now, we have our entire team on video every minute of every day so they can all hear each other every single conversation and so they'll be chatting things like oh great job keep going with that or you know they'll give them compliments or they'll give them pointers but all day long they're you know in so, the trenches with one another I, and i was going to ask that was my next thing to ask about because i know that you did we talked a little bit about touched on it in seattle but so every like they can look on the zoom screen and they can see any Every single one of their peers. Yeah, well, we have it broken down into two pods. So we have an outbound sales team where they're doing leads. They're on one screen. We have an inbound on another. Last month, though, we mixed it up and we did accountability partners. So we just had two on a pod all day long. So if it was you and I, I would hear you all day long. And that did, again, talk about work, you know, working on the culture. We thought that would be a great way to get team members together that maybe didn't know each other 
really well. For one month, they were on video with each other every minute of every workday. So to walk through the that listeners, awesome. if they want to do something like that, is it like they have their headphones for the system, right? Their phone system. And then on the computer, the audio is just kicking out the Zoom or whatever. Yeah. System. And so it does get tricky. Happy to help yeah. anybody with it uh, or oh, camera yeah. systems just walking out. But you do, you have to use your- You don't know your, what you just committed to. No, you, you have to use your name of it. But you've, you've got to turn, if you take a phone call, you want to turn yeah. Zoom down so you don't hear both. It, right. it depends on your phone system and how it interfaces. Like you'll just need to kind of figure that out. Okay. Yeah, and I, I would say it's been one of the best things we've ever done. At the beginning, a lot of people said, boy, this is like big brother. You guys are, you have us on video at all hours. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it. But, but then when we didn't do it, like last month, we had people pair up. They're like, I miss my group. So oh, it does, cool. yeah. With I mean, especially with having six offices, I mean, it does bring people together. And um, you do have to, I would say, as a manager, you need to know that you do have to remind people to turn their video on. And some people, you know, will be a little bit more, you know, I would say resistant to it at first, but <laughs> yeah. they can see the benefit of it. It's not Big Brother watching, it's more team unity. Um, sometimes like we have people that are transferring the influence, so they're dialing and then they're transferring it to a senior sales advisor. And a lot of times that helps them know if someone's on the phone, they can just look on the video pod and see if someone's sure. on the phone so they can transfer it if, if no one's answering the group chat. Um, but it helps me too. So I'll zoom in and I'll be listening to all of them talking at once. And then I'll hear something that maybe I want to listen to that call. And so then I'll, I'll just click into that call and listen to it live. Wow. That's yeah. an amazing way yeah. to yeah. To, so to I mean, just the it. ability to coach, it's just yeah. made a huge difference because that I, is. I know me. I always feel guilty if I don't talk to everybody and see everybody every day, right. and you know I feel like I'm leaving them out. And this just gives you the ability with one click to go on there. I've seen them all, and like Kristen said, you hear something, you pick something up that you want to talk to or you know coach on. You just do it right then. And you can do it from anywhere. You could be on your yeah. yacht with your with your phone, the big uh, yep. Olson yacht over there, and and uh, and look at the team. Yep, that's right. We've done it. <laughs> and the other thing I is, I think that you can find like um, people that maybe have something really like they're doing something really great on a call, and so I might zoom them and say, "Let's role play that." I really liked. I liked he hearing what you were saying, and so I'm learning from them. And we might say, "Hey, you guys, listen to what Jeff just did." Um, and we might talk about it on our team call the next day and role play yeah. that. Like it's like the role plays and the topics are endless. Um, if you're really listening and if you're really have a cohesive team. So I think we have that approach that we don't want it all just to come from us. We want feedback. I, you know, we want mm -hmm. people to say, Hey, look at how I made this my own. Maybe somebody else would, um, be interested in that. So. Isn't it amazing how when you're doing those coaching calls that you pick stuff up like all day, like I'll pick stuff up from my team yesterday. One of my, I was listening to a call whilst, you know, live and she said something that I had never done. I hadn't ever thought of. She was talking about liability and she said, let's say you, cause she was explaining what liability meant. Let's say you hit me. So instead of saying, you know, if you hit someone, cause we always say, if you hit someone, she, she made it, you hit me and my kids are in the car. And all of a sudden it's this, you know, That's they're good. connected. Yeah. Like yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, I can't believe I've never even thought of that before. And it was just, <laughs> it was, but it was great. And then the, the one, like the, the prospect that she was talking to, it drew her in. Yeah. And you could hear she goes, oh, I would never want to hit you. And, you know, all of a sudden they they were connected and she closed it. And it was, yeah. it was great. I mean, it, it was just really cool. And that so is. you pick up, yeah, you pick up all kinds of stuff. All day. Yeah, we, we do that with our team all the time, right? Right before our show yesterday, we were having Miles help us with, you know, tweaking the talk path because he's so awesome at that. And Did you see that video on our Facebook page, Craig? I haven't yeah. gone there. I, it's oh, been so funny. Got to go watch Miles, <laughs> what he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And we definitely want to talk. About, so, so that's a good segue into it. So you have the show for the role play at the, at the Olson Agency, and that's on your Facebook page. Um, and it's, it's real simple. I mean, I, I don't, I could even, you know, it's what 79 bucks a month and people can just be part of it. 
right? Yeah, no, I, I would say that uh, that's just our niche. That's what, you know, together we love coaching role play. And it's just a, a unique balance. I've got the 20, almost 25 years of insurance. So I bring a lot of the talk pass and just insurance experience and language. And then to pair that up with a certified instructor is pretty unique. And I, I just think Kristen has a very unique way of coaching role play because it is uh, it's all done on the positive side. She's not, you know, breaking anybody down. And uh, we, I believe it's the number one thing that you can do to improve your agency is implementing role play. I truly mm -hmm. believe that. And I fought it myself for years, didn't want to do it, never had done it for <laughs> first 18, but it's, it's really done wonders in my own agency. And so when I saw her skills, I thought, man, this would be great to be able to offer to other agencies and other staff who might not be able to do it. So yeah, for $79 once a week, we come on live on Zoom just like this and we pick two random staff members from agencies around the country that have, they've never met, which is the cool part of it. They've never met each other, we've never met them, they just volunteered because they're a member and we pick a talk path and we, I'd say, what do you think we spend on it each week designing this talk path? I, well, I mean, it just depends on the talk path, but we do like actually, uh, even though we have the talk paths, like in our mind, we, we role play them in our agency and make sure that's why we call it role play with the Olson agency, because our team is really helping us with this too, because I'm listening to them role play it with me. But I don't know, maybe if we're to prep for the show, I would say five hours, like yeah, we really want to make each talk path, you know, each week something where somebody can literally run back to their desk and use it right then. And we do a blend of sales and service objections, just just about anything you can think of. Uh, and so we roll, we come out with the talk path, we teach it, and we talk about the why behind it. We don't start the show out by just saying do this, it works. We talk about the why. We spend a good ten or fifteen minutes on that. Then we have these, again, random team members role play it live. Like they're nervous. They, they are, they're willing, but they're, nervous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because <laughs> it, it's just so real and raw, which is kind of the draw of the whole show. So they role play it live and Kristen might interrupt them. I might give them some coaching, but we, you, you see the second time around just how different and how improved they are. And so everybody gets something out of it. First of all, LSPs, you know, staff members that are watching are learning these talk paths, learning how to role play. But then agency owners, because I know, uh, I certainly didn't know how to coach role play. And so agency owners, when they're watching, they're watching Kristen, you know, coach on it, they pick up how to actually coach. So for $79, we feel it's a pretty darn good deal. That's a pretty good deal for yeah. sure. And how much of a difference have you seen because you were resistant to the coaching originally, or I mean, I'm sorry, not to the coaching, to the, to the role play, how, like from a, from a true perspective of results, how much different did it seem? And I mean, you know, there's, there's different metrics. There's the, you know, how well are they writing business? Are they closing better? But then there's also, I would think a retention of staff factor Definitely. too. Because yeah. yeah, for sure. This, this does so many things. First of all, the customer wins because we're talking the right way to them. We're always leading with protection. So number one, customer wins. Mm -hmm. But then just in terms of how, like we always laugh, you can go into one office and drive over to the next one. They're all talking the same way. So the customer gets the same experience no matter where they call. And we just know they're gonna be sold the proper coverage, good protection. Uh, because that's what we coach and that's what we role play. We, we never, you know, go light on coverage. But then when you're talking about like team unity and retention, um, it has done, I think like that's, that's huge. It's, we always say that we're a family here and um, the team really uh, does uh, treat each other like family. And I think that some of that is a good portion of it is because of the culture that we have, because what role play does is it opens up the communication across all channels of the business, not just like with talking to customers, but it really makes them, I don't know if you came and met our team, I mean, or even like looked at some of the chats, like they, they're just so open in the way that they communicate. I think it attracts a certain type of person. I was thinking when you guys were talking too about um, 
Jeremy at first and how he wanted to be an insurance agent since, you know, since he was a child and came from um, three generations of insurance agents. Uh, if there, sometimes we have people that don't work out because we're just, you know, business, you know, he's a business owner, we're running a business and, uh, you know, not everybody's going to stay. Not everybody loves this environment. You have to actually be right. a team player and be involved with the team. If you're a lone wolf, this does not work. Right. <laughs> So, um, but when we have people that leave, and I would say there's no one that leaves and gets into insurance somewhere else. This is a great place to work if you want to be in insurance. But if yeah. someone says, you know, insurance just isn't my thing, I've never seen a more hurt look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could you say that? You know, look at all that we've put into you and done. And, you know, like, he just does not, it doesn't compute how someone could not love insurance. And you know, I think that's what's so special about, um, you know, what we do here is that that's who's leading the helm is it's just in his blood through and through. And uh, so people, you know, that work here really get that, but they, there's just this willingness that's just very different than any, anywhere else I've seen. It's like an elf telling Santa that, that they don't like presents. It's ex exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, the look, I just am like, when people, I've had that happen a few times, and I'm just thinking in my mind, you don't know what you just did to this person oh. so by me, you know, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, no, we, we actually had somebody leave a couple weeks ago for that reason. They just didn't love the industry, and we were meeting him for lunch, and I had all these ways I was going to be able to, <laughs> and, I mean, what can I throw at him? What can I change for him? I I want him to stay, love him, want him to be a part of our team. And the first thing was, I just don't like insurance. And I, I don't think I said oh. that word because there was yeah. nothing I could do. You don't try do. to save someone like that. And yeah, to me, I just I just don't get that because I, I do truly believe this is the best industry in the world. Yeah. Being, being <laughs> you awesome. just stood up and silently walked away. <laughs> yeah. no, he, I mean, I had to lead the, con the rest of the conversation, but he, uh. yeah, he was pretty heartbroken. I mean, I yeah. could tell, I was just like, oh man, I can just feel that like, how could you do this to me? You well, just... and it's not about, it's not about <laughs> no, but me. It's, just it's not at all about me and the agency to lose in production. <laughs> it's them. I'm thinking, gosh, you could have this amazing yeah. life uh, in this industry, helping yeah. people. That's what my thought is, yeah. not what they can do for the agency. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Every, everybody thinks it's a, a commodity and that they just need to have it. And, and they don't realize like the, the, even some of our, the people that come to work for us don't realize the importance of the liability part, right? right? There's no understanding of the liability. It's I have this insurance to fix my car and because the DMV tells me to, yeah. <laughs> right? They don't realize the actual what's at stake and mm -hmm. they pay the financial advisor, all this money. They pay the, the lawyer, all this money, but they, think that we're just, you know, these, oh, it's just the insurance person. And it's like, I, I would argue we're more important because mm -hmm. without us, their stuff isn't protected. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, I, I mean, role-playing has changed our agency. I know it's changed Craig. Obviously it's changed your agency. So for people out there that are still, they're on the fence, this is still super uncomfortable, but maybe they'll dabble. Is there some tips that you can give them to maybe try to get a little session going. Maybe they're not ready to jump into um, to like a full subscription service with you guys. They're not ready to invest that kind of time and energy into it. How can they dabble with it where they can get their, maybe their team together or a couple of people? What are some tips that you guys would have? Well, actually, Jason, I, I loved what you did when you said you made everybody sing. What was the song you made them sing? Little, little Teapot. Uh, we, little Teapot. I threatened. So, um, I mean, if you <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I would say is um, practice character traits. So even okay. if you're doing um, like the little teapot, like say that you had your whole team do that, I'm a little teapot, um, and maybe you said, you know what, we're going to practice doing I'm a little teapot with confidence today. And before Ooh. that, what does that look like? And so um, if you had a whole bunch of little mm. confident teapots, um, yeah. Then how does that translate? Then it always has to translate into, okay, then how do you show that same kind of confidence um, on your phone calls or when you're talking to people in person? And so when people actually see um, what the character trait is, that's a great place to start. So I guess my point is, it doesn't matter what you role play, role play a character trait. 
And so that's one place. And then I don't think I've ever heard that. I like I'm, that. Is, I that love is just that. A nugget. That a nugget. Well, I, mean, <laughs> no. I don't know where it came oh, from. Oh, don't even start. Off like that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and I, I think that is really exactly what our show, kind of what my vision of starting this company was, is 90% of agents don't want to lead role play. So we'll do it for you. Like for a $20 bill, we'll come live into your office uh, on Zoom and do it for you. You can be, you know, you can be assured that your team would role play once a week. Uh, it would just be virtual. So that would be my other tip is <laughs> role play one topic a week. So mm, yeah. if you think about it, like, and I have people saying this all the time, they'll, you know, we'll teach a role play and then they'll say, okay, that's what I'm going to focus on this week with my team. Because the biggest thing is if you're going to invest your time in something, even if it's, I'm a little teapot, or if it's, you know, if it's something with your team, you want to see how that translates into business results, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So the only way to get business results is repetition. And so the repetition is roll one thing out at a time, because if you, I, I, all I can tell you is do not confuse your team with too much at once. So um, one thing at a time and then repetition the whole week um, and, and then listen to the calls for it. So sometimes we do like promos, like if we have a certain phrase that we want people to say, we'll do a promo where they will give them, you know, $5 a call, um, each time they say it, each time they say it. um, oh, just nice. to have a little bit of fun. And then they'll have to send us like what their calls are and then we'll listen back. But, um, it, you just can't confuse it, keep it simple. And then the other one is dabbling in it really doesn't work, Jason. I'm sorry, but it, uh, <laughs> You have to be consistent. So right. I would say the dabble is take baby steps into just trying it and have one specific day a week that you do it. You know, say you don't want to do it every day. Do it one day a week. That's a baby step, but be consistent. Well, and then I was also going to mention, it's funny you should ask, uh, because we d actually did a webinar. It's been about three weeks before we were starting our company on how to implement role play in your agency. And we gave that for free to anybody who wants it. So any listeners who would like that, uh, we would certainly pass it along to you. Is that cool. on the, on your page, on the if, Facebook page? Well, no, it's not on our page. We have it on our, on our business page for members, okay. but anybody that wants it, I, I can get a copy to you. Okay. Or, yeah. Get, get me a copy. We'll post it in the show notes. We'll, we'll make a link to okay. it and then, then people can grab it right here yeah. on yeah. iTunes yeah. or wherever yeah. you're listening yeah. to and, we gave plenty of these mic drop tips. Well, I, I, I honestly would just like to see um, Craig and Jason with confidence uh, role play. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> this moment? Yeah. Are you ready, Craig? I, I think I could do it. Okay, wait, wait. First <laughs> of all, let's do some coaching before. I'm excited. Okay, so give me your, um, what does, like, how do you exude confidence? What does that look like to you? <laughs> what, how, okay. You like that? They're Washington? puffing up their chest. They're standing up straight. Yeah, they've got smiles on their face. Okay, <laughs> so this is these are good coaching tips when you're te teaching your team possible. or coaching your team. <laughs> up straight, have All that because smile. Jason told me. Yeah, we can tell you're told. Okay, so let's go. Let's hear it. I don't All right, know Craig. Uh, One, two, <laughs> three. I'm a I little teapot, tea short, short and stout. And stout. <laughs> Here, Here is, is my handle. <laughs> Here is my spout. <laughs> when I get all steamed up, I don't know the rest. Hear me yeah, shout. Just tip, tip me, me over and pour, pour me out. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I added that one. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's good. I need to, yeah. I'm going to have to play that back and so that I know those words. So we're going to do that. That's yeah. a good one. Well, we had to YouTube it um, on the phone because no, no, nobody knows the whole, the whole song. Huh. I knew the we first did verse. We did. <laughs> well, okay. Now, can you critique, uh, critique that, please? Well, I would say that, Jason, first of all, I absolutely love your smile. Um, and <laughs> Thank you. So, and you were smiling the whole time, and it changed your tone of voice. So I would say that you had a more positive tone of voice. Um, and I, oh, in great. order to continue to utilize that tone of voice, I would smile really big when you're talking to anyone because that really works. That Craig, does work. I um, love that. Craig, I also love your just, you actually have a very uh, childlike quality. 
um, but you can work that to your advantage because even though you didn't know the words, um, that look in your, that twinkle in your eyes, like you were remembering childhood from singing the song, yeah. actually um, made, would make people buy from you. So, yeah, a little bit of kindergarten came back. Yeah. I would, um, gonna... maybe both of you could work on, if I would give you one tip, work on the words. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I didn't even know this was going to happen. I know. Yeah. So, and yeah. coordinated, um, coordinated body motions, like the same things, you know? <laughs> yeah, we were a little off. We weren't in sync. We yeah. can, I, I can we work. We weren't very Backstreet Boys on that. <laughs> How many of these uh, shows do you guys do a week? Is it one, two? Three to five. Really? Oh, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you record them and then how long uh, till they air? Two weeks. Mm, two weeks. They got to do yeah. it. We had, yeah. it was about four weeks and then we got a little lax a couple of the weeks. <laughs> On his ECP launch and then mine, we got behind a little bit. So. Yeah. And I will say the way you coached, so critiquing the coaching is awesome. I love the way you coach because you led with something that was super positive. And okay, then so at the very end, just, no, oh, you could maybe Greg. tweak this. I love that. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah, true, though. I mean, that's with Greg, it's all good. I, yeah. yeah, I wish you would like that. You know what? With um, me. I, I, <laughs> like, at the very beginning of, of our show, she used to do that. Yesterday, I, I can't wait for you to see this moment. We, we had a role play <laughs> victim, and she, she was amazing. I've actually verified with my whole team I was right on this. No, She I, was amazing. <laughs> And I, I, I picked up this microphone true. and I said, boy, if I could disconnect this thing right now, I would just drop it. That was <laughs> whoa. And in the past, Kristen probably would have done like she just did with you. Said, <laughs> you know, I think that no. was very positive. That was great. <laughs> Bring up and some pot. No, she went right to, are you kidding no, me? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said there's some things that I might, you know, like I love this. This is something that I could tell you're reading from the script. So let's try it again. I'm going to give you actually a do-over to be even more authentic. <laughs> but we have <laughs> pulled the office and it was good. Well, it was perfect. so this is the scoop. That's awesome. I think there's always something you can improve on, even if you're great. And mm -hmm. 100%. You want, to, you want to actually get that permission. That's another tip is get that permission up front from your team members. Is it okay if I coach you? Mm. Yeah. Um, because if you ask them, then they're going to be more open and you might even ask them like, you know, what, what are you looking to gain? They might say, I want to be more genuine. Okay. That's what I'm going to look for when I'm coaching you. And then. Ah, bring that up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See, these are the things, I mean, I, <laughs> the nuggets are just coming out. Yeah. I don't know. I, we could talk all day. I just would like to Love do it. Maybe we'll work again next week on that little teapot thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're up against the wall. There's two things we have to do. We do have a final question and then we have to take a selfie before. So we get everybody for the, the thing, the new thing we're doing. So yep. if, if you could give one piece of, of advice to somebody starting in this business, which is a much different world than when you started back when it was microfiche and, and oh. books. <laughs> I still have my machine actually. <laughs> <laughs> what would you what advice oh, would you it's give? funny because i i do go around sometimes and i speak to groups of new agents and there's always somebody that asks exactly that question and i think what they're looking for is the name of a vendor maybe the name you know, <laughs> what lead to buy and i always say the same thing i say you know one piece of advice if it were me the minute i leave this room i would walk downstairs get in your car and drive to the nearest bank and take out the biggest line of credit you can because that is the only reason I have six offices is because from day one, I have borrowed and invested yeah. and made my business grow. There is, you can't do this business if you're not willing to invest and grow. It's all about growth. So don't be That's a, Love it. That's amazing because I think you and only one other person said anything even remotely close to that and it was Jay Atkins. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's you can funny. Look, look well, he actually it. took that from me when we met, <laughs> we met three or four years. I love Jay, but we met three, three or four years ago, and I gave him that same talk. And I think yeah. he actually did go get in his car and drive to the bank. He he never had thought of that either. And it, it is so true. You've got to invest higher. I always mm -hmm. over hire. I always try yes. to have a bench. 
I always, if there's a new lead, something new I can buy that will help my business grow, I'm all in. There is yeah. no way I'm not going to do it. So many 100%. agents are, they're, they're fearful to spend the money to get the results. And, and if you don't spend money, you just hope that the phone rings. It isn't going to happen. Yeah. It's right. No, last night I was, I know we got to wrap this up, but last night I was talking <laughs> to an agency owner and he was, you know, kind of down on some of the changes and saying, you know, I, I can't do it. I'm going to have to cut staff. And I said, give me the bottom line numbers. How much do you need to grow? And by the end, he was going to hire three people. It just mm-hmm. mass yeah. out. There's no other business that you get renewals from. There's no other business that you can pay for a team member with all these different, you know, ways that we can earn income in one year. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Be and right. the, I mean, the math works like you just I mean, it's, it's all there every piece of that equation is there to make the money it's amazing yeah. so they i know everybody here already has their cards out they're ready to jump and and jump into the role play at the olsen agency where do they go <laughs> how do they find it insurance roleplay.com okay and we will put a link to yeah, the uh to the thing uh in the notes in the show notes that's well, and I, I think dot com. the other part of it is we, we, <laughs> we do make it fun. Like what you saw today with the, you know, the joking around and that's how we are. That's how she coaches. She does 90% of the coaching on the show. I bring the insurance stuff, but we do. We just have fun with it. And that's- he does give me like an extra hard time and I'm <laughs> always right. No, I <laughs> 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 okay. See, another uh, not not so positive feedback <laughs> i know you know what <laughs> me. beat up over there i well, <laughs> I <can't believe>. <laughs> well <laughs> hey, thank, thank both of you this is awesome yes. uh, would you come back again if we wanted if we uh, had some spots up available here in the future uh, I of think course, awesome. but i have a question for you will you guys Uh-oh. come on our show and be guest coaches i want to hear your talk Ooh, yeah of for course sure. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah, we love we love having guest coaches. Yeah, no, we we'll, so we'll be calling on you. Love All right. It. Okay. Perfect. Let's should we well, do a selfie? You. Yeah. Oh, I oh, almost selfie. forgot. Do you guys want to do one too? Yeah. We so a big group selfie. First. You guys go selfie first. Selfies. All right. Oh, there. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to talk because I don't want Craig's back in the <laughs> picture. Oh, okay. There. There. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now what are we? How do we? Wait, how do I? How do you do that with two people? I don't know. Oh, we can. It's a it's a new segment. Wait. (laughs) I don't know. Oh, three. (laughs) Three pictures. So I get it. Like they're photo bombing. You guys are photo bombing our selfie. Right. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I did that on our call yesterday and I posted on our Facebook page like right before the show. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> he can't post that. It's horrible. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you guys are funny. Oh, right. We I even appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, we appreciate it. It was yeah. awesome. Heck out of this. This was awesome. A ton of knowledge nuggets for everyone. And I think people hey, should start man. implementing tomorrow today wow. role playing yeah, right tomorrow today. thank you i really want you guys like i think i want you both like on the show at the same time i don't know how i'm going to manage that yet but i'll figure <laughs> it out all right yeah I'm we will down. See you. okay all right 55 percent of insurance sales producers say that they have had little or no sales at training us agents focus on marketing to drive activity and often overlook the sales presentation Improvements in mindset, shifting focus, rapport, needs diagnosis, value building, creating buy-in and overcoming objections lead to drastically better closing numbers. The solution? Enroll your team in September Sales Summit offered by Agency Vault. We will even assess your team to see which of their sales steps need the most improvement. Head to agencyvault.com to sign up before it's full. Hey, thanks for checking out the insurance dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.